Welcome to the latest video weather briefing. This is an update for the ENSO El Nino conditions and the latest outlook for this summer and into the fall. This video presentation is about five minutes long. We hope you enjoy this information about El Nino and how it affects Southern California. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist at National Weather Service San Diego. What is El Nino? El Nino is the warming of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, way out by the dateline south of Hawaii. How does it impact our weather? Well, it can alter the jet stream with a persistent extended Pacific jet stream that tends to move across Southern California and basically brings us more storms when the atmosphere and the ocean couple together. What's currently going on in the Pacific Ocean in that region that we monitor El Nino. Well, we do see significant warming that has taken place in the eastern part of the region as shown here in the bottom diagram. The map in the upper right shows the warming or the orange shade is significant over the past couple months, but recently has leveled off and even decreased in some instances. Last year, you can see we were in neutral or near the cool side of ENSO. What's the forecast? The forecasts using various computer models run climate and statistical as well as dynamic models of ocean sea surface temperatures basically show that along the yellow line there we expect to go into a moderate El Nino between the weak and the strong as we get into the fall and early winter. How might this affect us and what does El Nino mean for our wet weather or the drought relief that we may expect. Well, we would need 150% of normal precipitation, so not quite as much as two times, but this would be statewide precipitation necessary to get us out of the drought or to call it a drought buster. Past El Ninos, however, have resulted in variable precipitation, and we'll take a look at some of that. What do we mean by El Nino and having variable precipitation? Well, if you compare two El Ninos here, such as 86, 87, and the following year, 87, 88, for Southern California, and especially the inland deserts, significant differences. Northern California, you can see both of those years were on the dry side. Now, there was a signal in El Nino for 86, 87, but it went too far south to bring a lot of rain here and went up across Texas and Florida. How about another year, more recent, 2004-2005, famous for significant floods in Southern California and Southern Utah and Arizona, very wet year overall with numerous storms moving across that region. But in 2006-2007, with a similar strength El Nino, there was very little precipitation, in fact, near record-breaking precipitation on the dry side across the state of California, and we entered into a drought. How about another example? You can see Northern California very sensitive. 1994-95 was very wet with significant flooding in Northern California. However, 91-92, a similar strength El Nino as we measure in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, was very dry. Both of those years, however, were on the wet side for Southern California. Let's look at two years that were identical in terms of the strength of El Nino at 0.8. 76, 77, that was our most significant drought in California, and that began with an El Nino. Look at the following year, and Southern California really stands out. A drought buster year occurred then in 77, 78, with really virtually no change in the strength of El Nino. How about another example? Uh, 68, 69 a 1.0 on the scale for El Nino, and we had wet conditions in California. Then the following year, generally dry conditions statewide. So why do we tend to call El Nino and associate it with above normal precipitation and flooding in California? Well, if you look at all the El Ninos, and certainly the major ones as shown here, there's a really strong signal across really all the state, and especially Northern California and the Gulf of Mexico. These are the real wet years, and the strong El Ninos over 2.0 have resulted in these conditions. Here are some quick facts about San Diego region and Southern California and El Nino. 
At San Diego, we average 11.82 inches of rain in an El Nino year. That's all the El Ninos put together. That's for the wet season, October through April. However, it ranges from 3.8 to 22.47, huge range. The average strength of the El Nino that we see in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean has been 1.2 when you look at all the events together. Large variability in seasonal precipitation. And that's mainly when you see weak to moderate El Ninos. The strong El Ninos have been a little bit more consistent with above normal precipitation, though there are only a few of those that have occurred. We've actually seen two droughts started in El Nino, 76-77 and 2006-2007. So what is the outlook for temperature and precipitation for the rest of the summer into the early fall? This forecast is just released from the Climate Prediction Center on July 17th. We still are expecting above normal precipitation, and that goes all the way into Southern California and especially the Four Corners region of the Intermountain West. And unfortunately, continued warm weather after our record-breaking warmth we've seen this past winter and spring is expected to continue through the summer and into the early fall. How about for the winter? Everyone's wondering about the winter for precipitation. Basically, we're going to expect a signal from the El Nino to start taking in effect late this fall and continue right into the heart of winter. Here we show December through February and a above normal percent chance of wetter than normal conditions during that period, December through February. And that's mainly, as for reasons we discussed earlier, for Southern California and going into Texas and the Gulf Coast. Here are some links that you may find useful for monitoring weather and rainfall and other activities in the National Weather Service, such as the Climate Prediction Center. Thanks for joining.